Here we go. Another Let's Draw live on YouTube. Max. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Max. I know you worked hard on that. Appreciate it. Ah, oh, it's good to be back, guys. Welcome to the stream. So yeah, well yeah. done. <laughs> cool. I uh, hope you're all doing well. I uh, hope you're having a good week. Nearly Christmas, hey? Nearly Christmas. We, could, we didn't have a, a Christmas hat, but we, we improvised. Um, so welcome. Uh, I want to thank you for joining me, whether whether you're on the recording, on the or the uh, or the or the live stream. Welcome, and I hope you're ready for some for some drawing. So tonight we're actually analysing and sketching master studies. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be good fun. Master drawings, you know. Uh, um, I hope by the end of the session you'll agree with me that it's one of the best ways to practice and to improve at drawing. Um, yeah, we'll put that to the test. Materials I'm using this week, I'm using the classic um, Carbofello Stabilo Sanguine pencils, so the red chalk pastel pencils. Um, I might be using a normal pencil too, and also a, a uniball, just a ballpoint pen. Um, and I've got a, a putty rubber and a blade to sharpen my pencils. So whatever you've got at home, even if you've just got you know a normal pencil and a scrap of paper, that would be absolutely fine. Um, but so glad you're joining in with me. So yeah, and if you enjoy the stream, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you again in a future stream or, or a video. Um, got lots of content coming your way. Um, and yeah, I always forget to mention I've got a mailing list as well, so you can uh, get that in the description. You can sign up to the mailing list and. You won't miss another stream. Okay, so let's look at the schedule. Um, hi everyone. Hi Lucy. Hi Hannah. Anita. Anne. Good to see you guys. Teresa. Hiya. <laughs> hi Jane. So, master studies. Yeah, here we go. Analyzing and sketching. So, each artist we're going to take about. I think it's four drawings. We're going to look at four of their drawings and really analyze them and look at them and appreciate them and then we'll choose one of them you can help me choose uh, and we'll do a 20 minute study so it might not be a complete finished drawing you know I don't think it will be remember these are masters but what we, the idea is to gain some information and and uh, and really kind of be like archaeologists ar archaeologists where we're kind of learning from their skill um, and yeah we'll do 20 minutes on uh, Gruz, Michelangelo, Rembrandt, and Rubens, and take a little break in between. And then I'm just gonna show you some books and some different w websites that you can go to to carry on doing this if you enjoy it. And we'll, then we'll look at your work. So if you wanna join in and, and you wanna draw along this evening, uh, do hashtag your work on Instagram with the, with the hashtag Jake's Art Club and, and mention me as well. And we'll make sure to get it up on the stream and we'll we'll do a little review at the end it's always good fun so where were we yeah um what we're attempting to basically sorry <coughs> we're attempting to basically uh <clears throat> pick up some tips from these masters that you know they've spent their lifetime studying or uh, <clears throat> their lifetime drawing and painting so um, if it doesn't go to plan, you know, if you're not happy with what you've, you've produced, don't worry. Well, these these people, are, they're called masters for a reason. And um, what we're doing is not a means to an end. You know, we're not trying to make like this amazing picture to go on the wall. That might happen accidentally, but we're, we're really looking to learn. Okay, so bad drawings are better than precise, you know, good drawings. I want to see that 
that that learning happening on the page and that that analyzing okay so you're off the hook you don't have to create a great drawing this evening um and yeah let's do it let's jump into it first of all i want to show you this book that i put, picked up grew's the draftsman um yay hey jeanette glad you can make it so i picked this up the other week of ebay and wow just incredible um grew's is uh, our first artist we're looking at and he was born 1725 and he's a french french artist and just take a look at these sketches uh, and you'll see what i mean just absolutely uh breathtaking sketches so here we go i've got saved a few pages for you really cool stuff let's make sure it's in focus so yeah, as I was flicking through here, I was like, wow, this is, you know, just incredible. And I have to, we're going to have to make a study of some of his work. There we go, a little dog. What have we got here? Boy. And look at these portraits, especially. It's full of so much character and, you know, the contour lines and the flowing, the confidence of line is just phenomenal. Um, let's have another little look wonderful use of like lights and darks you know going in heavy just have a flick through wow look at that real good use of that that sanguine pencil so yeah awesome book this is called Gru's the draftsman and look at this we'll analyze this in a little bit i've got a nice image to pull up on the screen but I just wanted to show you this. This so I did a little study during the week uh, of this pic picture in particular, Head of an Old Man. And I just wanted to show you uh, how it came out. Sort of like a bit of a Blue Peter. Um, here's one I did earlier. Um, and, you know, I was really surprised at the process because I started off really light, just trying to get in the proportions. And I was way off, you know, my, the eyes were, coming way far into the ha into the head and the head was wasn't tall enough my the skull was you know too flat so after that initial sketch i i managed to correct the proportions with a little bit of measuring and i realized that bringing the eyes across like that is something i do a lot and you'll find that when you start to analyze your drawings you'll you'll fall into the same traps over and over again so knowing yourself like understanding yourself and your your uh, little mistakes is is all, all part of it um but yeah and then as i um as i kind of went further on with this drawing add, added layers of tone bit by bit you know adding it up but i was really careful to try and capture some of their like you know these absolutely beautiful maybe i can show it a little bit clearer these beautiful subtle line work you know that which normally we kind of when we get to shading we kind of switch off and we, we don't i don't put as much effort into that part as, as i should but this study really made me realize what can be done in that stage you know so much expressiveness and subtlety you know um just by making this line on the outside of the head not as dark you know and and and, and things like that and there are definitely things I've missed. So I've, I've not made the cast shadows quite dark enough and things like that. So yeah, I just wanted to, to show you and uh, to, yeah, to, to celebrate Gruz's work really. Here's an amazing one too. Um, so we've, we've got 20 minutes to do a sketch. We're not gonna be, this took, this took about an hour and a half. So we're probably not gonna get to like a full, a finished study um in 20 minutes but we can we can still make some real good um sorry i'm rambling we can still do some really good um kind of fact finding and 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 archaeology so let's have a look Gruz. here's our first image so and also guys i wanted you to join in with this so if you if you if you've got any faults about the artist about the works put them in the comments okay because we, we should be analyzing these together 
Yeah, I'm I'm no art historian. I'm no expert. I'm just kind of uh, analyzing it as I go. So if you want to join in that process too, that would be brilliant. Okay, here we go. Artist pencils going to be they're going to be great, Louisa. Don't you worry. Okay, so this is a beautiful little portrait of of a young girl. And yeah, I mean, what blows me away about his work is the way the contour lines, the lines that follow the surface, how they're, he, you know, he's kind of constantly changing direction. He's either going with the form or perpendicular to the form. Um, even on the lips, you see the little curved, curved lines wrapping around the lip to, to show that form. Really, really punchy shadows. I absolutely love the treatment of the hair. But also, yeah, the, the neck. Let me, I think I've got a little, if you've got the little hand thing. The neck here, look at them hatching lines. All curving round in that same kind of way. Just absolutely beautiful and, and flowing the way, that, the way that happens. And you've got this really kind of distinct core shadow coming through here on the chin. Uh, there then, wrap, wrapping round lines on the lips that I was talking about. So yeah, just incredible, incredible work. What do you guys think? Let's have a look at the next one. So this is the hand study. Now again, really, really, he loves them wrapping round lines to show form, accentuate that form. Um, I would say, you know, sometimes he loves it a little bit too much almost. They start to look like engravings or etchings. Um, but I think in the, the ones I've chosen, it, it it's you know it's it's subtle enough and it's really, really really nicely flowing. Sorry, sorry, showing form. Just look at that wrapping round and and changing direction slightly. You know that they're, they're not all going in the same way. Sometimes it's just blocking off areas with straight lines, changing direction slightly every time. Uh, but really 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 nice and look at that light edge to the hand here and then on this side a real dark edge real dark shadow line so thinking about line weight let's have a look next one nice portrait of an old lady yeah really the i think the values are just so on point aren't they the values here and he and i love the, just the expressiveness of line like he can tell he's so confident with these lines uh, especially the hands. Hands are so tricky, aren't they? But he's been so confident with where he's placing his lines. Um, and you can, I think one of the qualities that we can try to get from Gruz and from the other masters is this kind of power of line. You know, um, just be confident. Like go, go with, go for it. Instead of that, you know, the kind of hatching. Not, not quite sure. We can we can sketch in and put the the kind of um, the gesture down lightly, but then when you're kind of more or less sure, go in go in, you know, with confidence. And again, beautiful um, contour lines hatching round all different directions. A little bit of reflected light, just very subtly. And one thing to think about is um, not putting in too much reflected light. It can be very easily done. I do it a lot. And Gruz doesn't do that. He keeps it in check. Let's have a look at the last one. Oh, and here's the standing figure that was on the cover of today's session. And I love, I just really like, enjoy the, again, them confident lines and the, the kind of, um, the movement that he's able to capture here. You know, even even the cloth, even the fabric has gesture and has, you know, just so much expressiveness. And we've got a little bit here, you can see this, there's a little bit of the gesture showing through. So the drawing would start very much like that, all over, very much kind of just scribbled in with a very light pencil. And then he's gonna go to town with, with some, some darker, uh, more confident lines. So, so guys, which one do you wanna do a study of? We've got, the young girl, number one, 
the hand, number two, the old lady, number three, or the guy standing up in the clothes, number four. Which one do you want to have a go at for our 20 minute study? Let me know in the comments and we'll choose and we'll get started. Here we go. What do you fancy? Number one, number three, Larisa says, I'll show you again. Number one, the young girl. Number two, the hand study. Number three, the old lady. And number four, the guy with the clothes and the movement. We've got one, one for number one, one for number three. One or three, people are saying, okay. Let's have a look. Um, I'm thinking, yeah, let's go for the old lady. Um, that sounds good. You've got, we've got some nice lines in there, haven't we? And we've got some nice, real nice visible hatching and things that we can kind of try to emulate. Okay, so 20 minutes. Let's put in a rough gesture but I don't want you to try and finish the whole drawing. You know, maybe you can focus on one area, do a study of just the lips, just the hands or just the eyes, um, and really, you know, take take some observation time to to really uh, kind of copy his lines and, and sit, try and to get get into the mind of, of Grooves. Let's have a look. Yeah. I'm going to go for sort of the mouth area and just work work on from there and see see where, how we can how we can how we do. Okay, 20 minutes. So a little bit of gesture, a little bit of like um blocking in with a very faint line, faint lines. But remember, you're off the hook. If it's out of proportion slightly or something, it doesn't matter. We're, we're going to try and emulate his lines, the confidence. So I'm just loosely sketching in. Try to follow the the areas of tone and look at them use them as a kind of anchor points so this point here of the of the eye the left furthest left point where there's a lot of shadow i'm using that as an anchor point visual a visual point and i can imagine lines from there to to gauge my drawing and, and kind of um measure as i go Just blocking some bits in. And then we'll get to some more kind of analytical drawing following his lines. Okay, something like that. Gonna rub it out slightly. Oh, Lucy chose number two. You know, I'm pretty sure you've had enough drawing hands. <laughs> I've seen your profile. <laughs> yeah, Lucy's been practicing drawing hands. I think yesterday and this week, she's had enough. <laughs> Not surprised. Um. Okay, so we've got something on the paper now. And I'm going to start with some lighter tones and try and follow with, follow the, the the direction of of shading. 
um, you know, kind of a habit that I do is just to go left to right. And, and you know, that can work, that can be that can be great, but seeing Gruz's work, it's like, wow, there's so much that can be done by by changing that direction and and being a bit more free with it. Um, so yeah, let's, let's have a go at, at doing that. This side of the face, we can lock in a little bit. But there's some lovely lines. Once you get going, you kind of you want to kind of lose yourself in in the drawing. I always find there's that that like um, that magic kind of state of mind where you're kind of your eyes are a bit glazed over and you're not really sure where you are, but you're you're focused and you're drawing. But yeah, some of these. Let's get some of these contour lines in. Now I'm gonna. I'm going to show you as well. So if I was holding my pencil with the, like a, like a writing and oh, no worries. Um, I hope you have a good evening and uh, I'll catch up with you another time. So with, with the, um, the pencil, you know, I, I'm always saying, you know, hold it, hold it under the hand like this and not, and not kind of like a, a writing utensil. Um, because there's so much more movement. So let's just try and get some nice lines with that writing way. Uh, you know, not done too bad. And then let's go go with the the pencil, holding it like an artist. You know, I feel that there's so much more. looseness expressiveness in these lines that you're able to get so it's it's also kind of looking at the quality of the line trying to emulate that and try to the more you do that you'll, you'll kind of take on what, what he was thinking and what he was trying to achieve so here I'm putting in the shadow and I'm just I'm following his lines again We've got this lip and there's some wraparound lines. Shadow under the lip. So one thing I found with the other study was that these chalk pastels blunt really easily and it's difficult to get that fine point that is often shown in these drawings. So I found myself having to bring bring the angle of the pencil up and resharpen the pencils quite often. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because it's, it's looking quite hazy here, you know, it looks quite um, uh, kind of undefined. I'm going to try and lift my hand up a little bit and have a little bit more of a fine point as I'm drawing. And um, don't be afraid to, you know, correct what you're doing and just go in there with a the, with the putty rubber and think, right, where are the lights here? And just block out the lights, you know, and, and go over your drawing and just correct it. So I was definitely wrong in a few places. 
sort of more of a chin there, isn't there? But it's okay, it's our first one, you know, get into the groove. It's difficult, you know, copying a drawing as opposed to going at something with your own approach. It's tricky to get used to. seeing these drawings and spending a little bit of time emulating hopefully will cross over into your own drawings you know after this we can go away and so I need to make sure my proportions are correct here but make you you can go away and put some of this this character of line some of this flair into your own uh, rendering always room to improve isn't there there's always something to be working on um, and there's just a wealth of knowledge here that we can tap into look at this these these lovely contour lines on on the on the neck wonderful stuff and when it comes to cloths or anything have a strong have a confident line step back and kind of think about my values now
I love the contrast that he's got in the forehead there. And then this lovely kind of ribbon effect on the hair where there's that shining light running through and a few streaks to help show. I'm gonna really kind of loosen up a bit, I think. And just remember that this is a study, a quick study. And I wanna gain some of that confidence and ideas for, for hatching and con contour lines. You know, not necessarily making a photocopy. comes from years of anatomy practice. And there we are, skimming over the surface, trying to emulate all of that experience. But it's a good way to, you know, have a, it's good to have a goal, had to something to strive to. find whenever I do these studies you know I'm using the pencil in ways that I wouldn't have I just wouldn't have done it's forcing you to to be more um, more creative and have more flow have kind of more dy dynamic lines room for uh, eyelids. So when we're life drawing, I always say, you know, there might be just a couple of lines that you're happy with and that you can really celebrate in a drawing. So maybe, maybe, you know, you're happy with just a small little area on the forehead or something like that. And that's fantastic.
I think <clears throat> could do a lot more here. I'm using the pencil so lightly now, it's just resting on the paper. No, no pressure at all. Okay, time's up. Last few marks. I want to take a step back and just see if there's anything, you know, really glaringly obvious that we've missed or that would just improve it slightly. So I think, um, I think in 20 minutes, you know, it's obviously a lot, a lot rougher. I'm having, I'm having quite a lot of difficulty getting that real smooth kind of um, etching, like hatching, uh, going on. Um, but it looks a bit abrupt, you know. It looks a bit uh, quick, um, but I think. What I've taken away from this is each of these forms on the face has its own wrapping line. You know, each form should be given its own amount of um, importance on the face. Um, yeah. And um, <laughs> doesn't look anything like it. But I think that time spent analyzing you know going round analyzing the hatching has been beneficial nonetheless all right should we move on don't forget to share your work uh ha hashtag jake's art club if you're uh, joining in tonight and i can't wait to see what you've done at the end now we're going to move on to michelangelo so um new bit new bit of paper let's have a look at some of his work so michelangelo born 1475 italian or what was then the republic of florence um picture of genesis and everything but look, let's look at some of his sketches absolutely incredible wonderful wonderful uh, figurative sketches but I the bits I love the most are these um, unfinished bits you know here that directional hatching and we can start to see his construction lines that they are the bits that I really enjoy seeing uh, you know what's going on in the process not so much the, the fully rendered um, uh, drawing because we can hardly see any hatching here but there definitely was uh, but we, this is much more useful to us for an, an anal analytical way. Um, and then we've got this one. 
we've got that hatching coming in here starting to be exposed and I love the way you know the hatching it kind of it it's you know it's it's going like this and then changing direction ever so slightly and that changing direction is causing that that um, that cross hatching and that and that effect to take place just a slight change in direction you know it's the majority of it's going that way but with just a, a variation in in uh, in angle lovely drawing oh another good one a bit more hatching visible just incredible so I was kind of reading up and a lot of these masters you know they they wouldn't even draw construction lines sometimes because they knew it and they could visualize it. Um, but they definitely were drawing the construction lines in their head, you know, like a line for where the eyes would be on the head or, or the, the angle of the chin. Um, they definitely would be drawing it in their, in their minds, but they wouldn't necessarily be even putting it on the paper. Incredible stuff. And look at this, wonderful. So I was thinking to do, to have a go at this study because so much of the underdrawing is exposed. We've got so much of that hatching there uh, kind of kind of exposed. And, and we can even, we can even see that initial sketch. Look here, that initial draft kind of gesture. Um, so join me in, in doing some, a little bit of a study of this page and um, hopefully we can start to use some of these, I think directional strokes and change the angle just slightly. So directional and, and changing the angle. Yeah, let's do it. Let's have a go. Good old Michelangelo. Um, oh, I forgot to say, uh, Gruz, he, um, little interesting fact, he started drawing when he was um, very young but he finally convinced his parents, he finally convinced his dad to, um, to let him go to art school when he copied a, uh, an etching uh, of a, I think it was of a, a portrait. And he, he copied it, you know, like we're doing now. And it was so convincing that his dad thought that it was like a stolen uh, reproduction. Uh, but when, it, when they finally found out that he did in fact copy it himself, they were like, well, all right, we'll send you to art school. I thought that was kind of cool. And um, and Michelangelo. So I'm going to start with um, with kind of uh, the gesture. So let's go really loose and try to put in some of these forms. Really loose, really really lightly. getting kind of the overall shape and imagining the form as we do it as well. See, my, so Michelangelo's even just left that part blank because he can see it in his mind. He hasn't bothered to even construct it. Just incredible stuff. But hopefully we can begin to kind of take on this, the flow of his lines. So yeah, Michelangelo, his, his uh, story. He, uh, the way he kind of was discovered is he did a copy of a, um, a, a Cupid 
uh, just a, a in a, in kind of like a an ancient Greek style. And his his mate at the time was like, "Oh, it's great, but like it's really impressive. But if you bury it and then dig it up again, and it's all covered in you know mud, and it looks like a a, a real artifact, we can sell this for a lot more." You know, if we pretend it's really from ancient Greece. So that's what they did. They buried it and they they had a go at um, at selling it. They sold it to some um, uh, cardinal or someone, like someone, you know, for, for a high price. Uh, but they got found out. Eventually the story came out. But that guy, that the, the, the person, the buyer, was so impressed by the artwork that he actually invited um, Michelangelo to that city. And uh, from there, he, he was discovered. So a uh, little bit of fraud started uh, Michelangelo's career. <laughs> it's quite funny. Um, so of course, he has an incredible, incredible knowledge of anatomy and we're kind of just emulating that on the surface. But we're gonna look at now, once we've got a, a rough sketch down, we're gonna look at his hatching lines. So I've got the gesture and I'm going in with a bit more of a defined sketch. So a bit more defined. And now let's get a sharp point and, and go in with some hatching. Okay, so nice directional, beautiful hatching. Straight lines. You can rest your hand on the paper with your, your pinky and get straight lines going across the page. Start with the darkest, uh, the lightest hatching, and then build it up with successive layers. Changing direction a little bit here to to go with the um, angle of the leg. But notice how the lines are further apart and then as they go into shadow getting closer and closer together to show that roll of the of the form and going with some contour lines now further kind of Describing the form, such a good knowledge of anatomy and bring in the dark, bring in that contrast in when where it's needed.
shadow of the shoulder. Trying to keep some of the fine point that we can see. This is where a graphite pencil would probably be better suited to get that real fine point. One thing they're so good at is uh, saving up that the the the, the, uh, the line weight for the for real, where it's really important, where it's really descriptive. Yeah, we can. I think you'll agree. We all, as beginners, we all sort of go in there with heavy-handedly with the with the pencil and make real dark marks, and then we are often you know rubbing out from then from that point um, but the masters would save that darkness for when it's telling the right story of muscle or shadow and keep them nice and varied really clean lovely um, descriptive borderline there the line the shadow at the bottom of the nose Hopefully by now you're starting to feel a kind of flow, a kind of certain feeling in your drawing now where you're not, you know, following that automatic process that you normally do, but you're, because we're being forced to follow these masters, we're taking on how they would approach these subjects and it's starting to stick, starting to make a bit of sense.
How big was this drawing originally? Good question. Um, I don't know. I have seen a few in person and they're not enormous, but I, I'm definitely led to believe that a lot of these figure studies that Michelangelo did were big because of that almost life size, perhaps because of the, um, the size of, you know, the, the, the shape of the paper, it just looks, it looks big. And of, of course there's not much detail. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a look, see if I can find out the size of a few drawings. So this one in particular, I don't know. There's a few studies here. Um, and Okay, so this one that we saw earlier is 400 millimeters by 250 millimeters. So yeah, what is a, a normal ruler is 50, 30 centimeters. So um, probably about, probably about a bit, yeah, quite, you know, a bit larger than an A3, I guess. That one, I'm not sure about this one in particular. So it's not that, it's not that much bigger. Although I guess if you were working on a bit larger than A3, you could just, you know, you would, you would be working even bigger than this. Silly sentence, I know. Let's take a step back and have a look. So I feel like, yeah, it's getting a bit thin here and a bit, wide there isn't it so maybe we can fix that a little bit shoulder line here on the uh, on the arm really important for showing the box of the, the wrist see that a lot in drawings with good anatomy so there we go guys that's 
pretty much 20 minutes. Maybe you've had a little sketch of a few other areas on the page as well. This, the face down at the bottom there, I absolutely love with some lovely uh, directional hatching going on. Just really nice profile. Beautiful. Um, beautiful little uh, drawing down in the bottom corner. Um, we're going to take a little break. I hope you've enjoyed. Oh, Teresa. <laughs> it's, cause, it's probably because there's quite a few little drawings on the page, isn't there? And me drawing as well probably doesn't help. But um, it's good. The, the, the fact that you are keep you keep looking back is good. You know, we should be looking, 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 you know, 90% of our time analyzing and, and taking in. Um, so well done, everyone. We're going to take a little break and um, be back in five minutes. Um, and then we're going to look at Rembrandt, which shakes things up a little bit. We're going to get we'll get out a pen and use use pen for Rembrandt. And then uh, we'll look at Rubens as well. So some more just phenomenal uh, draftsmanship. So I'll see you in a little bit. Um, if you want to keep drawing, there's a there's an image to draw, and I'll see you in five.
got a master musician with us today very fitting how's everyone doing had a drink a little bit out of focus aren't we ah brilliant i just i'll tell you what just looking at these um the master drawings is just like wow you know just love drawing so much you know it's just like it, it, and it, it just shows you what's possible and yeah love it and especially love rembrandt who we're going to look at next um because he kind of doesn't give a you know anything about about um kind of what came before him in a way because he he he's very expressive and very kind of um they're very sketchy uh, you'll see what i mean how's everyone doing <laughs> well done max um okay so rembrandt I'm going to turn page. So we've got these beautiful sketches from Rembrandt to look at. And I love this one in particular um, of, uh, you know, mother and child. Even though the guy, the child looks a little bit like an old man, he's got this, he, he's got this habit of making children look like elderly people for some reason. But we'll forgive him. What's awesome about these sketches is the kind of the, the directness of them and the, the flowing lines and the, I love that that quick added wash to just bring in a little semblance of tone so these sketches I think this was done as a as a as a sketch in its own right but sketching like this was often done as what's called a caricature uh, kind of oh no sorry a, a cartoon of a uh, it's called a cartoon of a painting so like a, uh, it's it's like um different to how we use the word now storyboard like a a rough you know layout and um yeah and and the these drawings are often light and dark you know there's no kind of in between and i love that i love that about them just really beautiful lines um and, and kind of carefully constructed around the head, you know, not overstating the face, like just one little line. I'll show you with the, the hand, the magic hand, you know, one little line here and just leaving that light of the eyelid, you know, absolutely fantastic work. You know, I love these flowing lines and it's really captured a moment. Even look, look, look how crude these feet are, look how crude parts of it is, it doesn't matter. He's got the he's got the idea there, hasn't he? He's really got it across. Um, what else have we got? Ah, this is a like a side profile of a, a woman, and there's some really good kind of learning points here. Again, he's got that minimalistic um, face, and you know the lines are darker in the shadow, darker where we you know if we. You remember back to when we were looking at the shadow areas of the face he's, he kept them dark lines for there real dark here um but really nice and descriptive on the on the on the fabric but then look look at this wraparound line here see i doubt the the collar was that obvious uh the sleeve sorry was that obvious but by doing that he's accentuating that cylindrical curved form and there's the same thing with the opposite wrist. So just a little bit of uh, knowledge, like kind of knowledge and, and a form there creeping into his drawing just to accentuate it. Because he's not drawing exactly what he sees. He's drawing, uh, he's trying to get across something to the viewer. And he's, he's using his lines very sparingly and very deliberately to do that. I love this little bit of hatching in the distance. Uh, yeah, love it. Larissa, disappointed with Rembrandt. 
what's what's going on um, then we, we, we've got another sketch here it's particularly like the one on the top left um, just the way the hatching comes together uh, it's so free it's so like uh, it's not following a where, whereas Leonardo was following uh, you know a direction and he was following a kind of a formula that he'd probably practiced and you know just needed to get these sketches out here uh, Rembrandt is having fun with the lines you know really even little the lines become little dots at, at points uh, just in the forehead you know he's really uh, pushing line to its extremes uh, and even though you know the, the beard beard is something that's really tricky to capture but actually he's he's making note of where the beard is is coming from you know the, the different forms here the different flowing areas of beard it's not just a mesh of beard you know it's he's really understood and a nice strong ear uh, contrasted to the to the hair really love this on the side plane of the nose just a little bit of a suggestion again side of this 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 eye so you can see it's all forms it's all it's all been thought about um, and have we got another sketch from Rembrandt oh yeah I think this was a drawing of an actor or something and it's so difficult to choose only four drawings but I just enjoyed this one you know it kind of looks like a Quentin Blake or something doesn't it like exaggerated forms uh, and it's meant to be an actor with a with like a flat hat on um, and I, I just really enjoy the lines you know look at that look at that there on the on the fabric really going for that form and all of this detail is just suggested there's not actually anything going on there it's just some lines isn't it there's not he's not drawn the sword or or whatever it's meant to be it's just you know maybe a button here and there but he's not drawing uh, all the stitching and everything it's it's really really roughly suggested so I was thinking to draw um, either the the woman and child the the, the mother or the, the the portrait so which one do you want to draw guys one two or three let me know um, number one number two this is a really quick one so maybe we could do maybe we could do two two of them in in the 20 minutes because they're quite a quick they're quite abrupt number three Teresa says yeah great okay me and Teresa say number three we're going for it so choose one of the portraits here I'm, I'm gonna go for the top left because it's just the clearest isn't it it's the, it's the most finished um, maybe we can um, split this one up and do uh, do one of these ones as well yeah Anita if you want if you want to if you fancy doing one of the other ones I think for Rembrandt we don't need a full 20 minutes so maybe if we we cut it we cut it to 20 minutes or something we can uh, cut it to 10 minutes each how about that let's bring in a uh, let's bring in a 10 minute timer Ta -da. there we go brilliant right let's, let's, let's 10 minutes on this and 10 minutes on one of the others so have a think Put in the chat which you want to do the, the the woman and child number one or the uh, the older lady side profile number two and we'll do that next okay Thanks guys. Yeah, keep them coming in. <laughs> Thanks, Robert. Okay. So we can afford to be sketchy and loose and rough here. 
you've got a pen, grab your pen out. Maybe a few lines at the beginning. To um, get some sort of gesture, overall composition of it, but then then we're going to go in okay got some sort of gesture there I'm going to start with this eye I think So wonderfully kind of sketchy and, and quick. And let's investigate, let's find out what he's doing. What is he? What are his little rendering secrets? tones building up where where the lines are beginning to cross over becomes crowded becomes sort of and I'd much rather it was it wasn't line for line but it was the feeling capturing that feeling and that kind of general idea of what he was going for. Look at that spinning around there, collecting. There's a great book. I can't find it at the moment. I was going to show you. I've got a great book called, I think it's just called Rembrandt Drawings. And it's just a little pocket sized thing full of little ink sketches like this. And it's great to just get that out and, and, and you know, attempt to a quick study just to get this kind of confidence of line before you, um, before you make your own image. takes me back to when we were doing them car drawings them quick fire freehand ink drawings that was brilliant lots of fun so now I keep building up just 
squint your eyes a little bit, find the tone. So it's drawing in pens kind of daunting. It can be kind of like, ah, oh, you know, there's no way to go back. But actually, when you, can't, when you start drawing with that confidence, it's fine to go back and correct something, you know. It looks good in, the, in, in, a, in a pen sketch, it's fine. Um, so having, you know, I'd much rather have a confident line and correct it than have two sheepish lines. Um, so getting out the pen every now and again can re really kind of really good at reminding you that just to go for it And isn't it just more fun drawing like this, you know? Just. Always imagine them children book illustrators or, or um, like newspaper cartoonists that just, they're just having fun. They're just going for it. They're not holding back. Oh, I think I went over use the wrong line there for the ear. It's got a funny shape here, but oh well. <laughs> Last 20 seconds then, so squint. Have you missed any areas of dark that you need to accentuate just quickly? So maybe here on the nose, that eye there. bit more here, a bit more there, and we'll leave it there. Well done everyone. There's a little, there's a little Rembrandt sketch. Hope you had fun with that. Now, what? Which one was the second one you wanted to do? So, what have people said? Lucy says number one. Robert says number one. Anne says number two. Let me know. This one number one, or this one number two. At the moment, we're going with this one. Not sure how long the delay is on the... Oh, we've got a number two come in from Teresa. 
So we're, now we're tied up. Now, now, now what do we do? <laughs> I'm going to say let's go for number two because we don't have the wash. So we we uh, we could um, Trees, You can't change your mind. You said you said you started with number three. <laughs> um, so we don't have the wash. Let's go with this one, uh, so we can get a similar result. And I think it won the vote as well. So again, rough gesture, so just a rough shape for sort of the head. can start going in with a little bit more kind of a uh, little bit more guts Try not to overstate the face. Oh, <laughs> whoops, going a bit heavy there. Just trying to save the. Dark parts for where they're most needed.
So that's the thing. What can we learn from this drawing? If you were to draw this this pose, this lady in this pose, could would you would you have gone for every detail in the face? Would you have gone for you know perhaps bits of fur on this collar? You know, would you have been distracted by things and not captured that overall uh, uh, gesture and 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 like here this curve of the wrist? What's what you know? What's really essential? We've got just a little line here, haven't we? Of this 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 chair or whatever it is, and I think it's fascinating to see. The choices that they're making the masters and you know just a little glimpse into their mind a glimpse into their thought process I love the way Rembrandt simplifies hands and feet into blocks you know into really kind of crude shapes it's fine you know that gives the viewer exactly what they need nothing more uh, you know we can see what that is and it's and it's conveying a, a, an expression as well. Now that let's put in a bit of a hatching or something in the background they had. Just, just have a look. See where he's. He's made things a little bit darker and try and understand why that is. Perhaps here she was leaning against the wall, so there's a little bit of shadow happening. here yeah I'd love to know what you guys have thought of this process and if you if you're learning anything you know please share I want this to be like a, uh, a group investigation you know a group kind of archaeological dig You know, definitely just this minimalist approach to the face is something I'm going to take away from the sketch. The next time, you know, I'm on the tube or drawing anyone, you know, as a quick sketch, I'm just going to look for them, the darkest lines. He's incredible, isn't he? Great, Hannah. Great. No, I'm so glad. Cool. So that's last minute on that. So I really, I really enjoyed doing two there for Rembrandt because he's there's, there's a bit quicker and a bit, uh, bit kind of more fast paced. But there's, there's the Rembrandt sketch. Yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, he, he really is. And I think what I appreciate about Rembrandt as well is he, he had the bravery to kind of do 
more, I don't know, out there compositions and it's lighting and kind of uh, more kind of shocking at the time paintings. And you gotta, you know, you gotta love that if someone's pushing the, pushing the, uh, you know, what what was the status quo at the time. And I think he uh, made a good fortune, didn't he? But then lost it all or something. <laughs> I don't know. It, I think he had too extravagant, uh, too many extravagant like uh, interests. He was collecting paintings and all sorts, and then. Uh, and then lost all his money. Cool. Well done, everyone. Rembrandt, fantastic. I suggest you check out more of his drawings. Uh, and and because you know, in a quick little sketch, I think Rembrandt gives you the best value for time in terms of uh, these studies. Uh, and then last guy we're going to look at is Rubens. So here we go, Rubens. Um, Rubens Flemish. Born in 1577, um, and he even learned much of his craft from copying uh, kind of uh, uh, the Renaissance artists. So he 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 was doing exactly what we're doing now to try and learn, and and I thought that was kind of cool. Um, a lot of these masters are self-taught. You know, they they've. They have the reference there and they and they practice 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 they study that the people before them uh, or, or just replications you know that they've got hold of uh, uh, I think it's great and it just shows you what you can you can gain from looking at these okay so here we've got the, I think this is Ruben's son uh, so that's kind of interesting you know he he made quite a few studies and paintings of his son and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a nice relationship with the sitter there. You can kind of see it in the lines, in the dedication is put into this. So these are red chalk and and uh, and black chalk uh, and charcoal. Sorry, I don't know what red red chalk and charcoal and um, maybe a little bit of white white chalk in there as well. And I actually don't like the color mix. Like I don't like it where it's mixing colors. Some of you might like that, I don't know. Um, but what I really love is the delicateness of the of the shading. You know, following the contours, you know, so, so delicate. Um, and then real darkness, real broadness. Um, leaving these highlights of the paper, or, or, or I think it might even be chalk lovely flowing ribbon of the hair and kind of just blocking out this area isn't he? it's kind of blocking out i think there's maybe two di two directions of hatching there to give a little bit of form but really there that you know if you if you squint at this there are some really strong lines mixed in with incredibly um subtle and remarkable light shading um yeah, it's funny. I don't know why that was. I think that was kind of the style at the time to mix the uh, mix the chalks, but I I don't like it. Funny, <laughs> uh, great drawing though. Yeah, and then we've got this study, which I love. Really nice. I love that. Um, you know this. What's it called? Like a cravat or something, round the around here just so loose he knows exactly what he's doing with it it's, but with a few lines he's captured exactly what it is and and the, the, the puffiness of it and everything you know these lines are kind of bursting out from the neck um fantastic modeling of the mustache really minimal the faces aren't they really minimal just the top eyelid and you know the iris and everything this is great. This is, looks like a copy of a Greek sculpture or something, doesn't it? But really, look at how subtle and well observed them lines are. You know, getting the profile right like that is wonderful. And that these lines kind of carry on a little bit and explain more than they would if they were just a, a solid line. Just wonderful stuff. 
Um, yeah, I think that was white chalk. White chalk and uh, and charcoal, this one. Let's have a look at the next one. And I'm glad you're getting immersed in this, it's great. Um, so I really like this, again, more, more of a subtle one. Um, but I really, I can appreciate the, the, the starting off so lightly and so kind of gracefully. It looks like, I can't work out if that's a like a hair in the painting, like a, a hair in the paper, or that's a, a, an actual line meant to show the, the chin. But either way, it works, you know, it, it kind of, I would even maybe even put the line there to show that, that, that uh, change in direction of the chin leading up to the ear. Um, but so, so much said here with so little. So this is charcoal and chalk again. And last one, charcoal and chalk, white chalk, yeah. Real confident, isn't it? real confident and it, what I would say is he's got a lot of mid-tone like he's got a lot of that like uh, cream of the page uh, probably more than I would have expected and more than I would have gone in you know if I was drawing this myself so he's really kept the, the cream of the page in a lot of that mid-tone um, wonderful descriptive profile lines yeah let's have a look at them feet Anita yeah wow really lovely just a just a subtle suggestion of that far foot as well um, really nice so it's choosing time what are we gonna go for number one the boy Ruben's son number two the guy in the in the cravat and the and the Greek study. The the woman, number three, or the guy, number four. What do you want to go for? So I'll say them again. Number one, number two, number three, and number four. And I guess you could come back and and uh, pause and, and have another go at the other ones if you if you missed the one you wanted. But let me know what you want to go for. Robert says number four. Hannah says number two. Teresa says number two. Anita says two or three. Two or three. Okay, let's go for two and see how we get on. And maybe we can do a little a little quick study of the, the face here or, or maybe a little quick study of the feet just because they're so well and delicately drawn. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a good study page. There's lots to go go from here. You know, you can you can do either, either picture, either portrait. Um, so yeah, what should we say? Uh, 20 minutes, maybe we cut it a little bit short. And, and do some of the other one. Let's go for it. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna switch to pencil just to see if we can get a little bit more of a um, fine line, you know, a little bit more of the, that subtle detail. Whereas with the, with the chalk pastel, it felt a bit bloated, it felt a bit mushy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have, a, have a go with a 2B uh, Faber Castell 9000 series, a really good pencil. Okay, let's go for it. So, good luck, everyone. Remember to get that gesture and get some guidelines in for yourself. Before we move on into the rendering.
So we're looking down on the head. So we've got a little bit of, we're gonna have a really real large forehead. And a little bit of wrap around of the eyes. And let's not neglect the the forms of the moustache because it's so prominent in this part. Really think about the form, think about that ribbon uh, effect that we can capture. Hi Christine, what's your idea? Can I draw Joe next? Mm. Who's that? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Have you got any more? Give me another joke. <laughs> okay, get into the swing of it a bit now. So I'm kind of, what I'm doing now is I'm kind of loosely going around and I'm, I am following the, the direction and the, and the approach, trying to follow that approach that I think that Rubens is going for. But I'm not being so careful about it. I'm kind of just getting something down on the page, trying to get things in the right position because then this will then tell me, you know, it would be that blueprint for when we come to render kind of more seriously and we can we can even rub out this layer completely if we need to um but that kind of we've been drawing for a little bit now and i'm starting to feel the the bit a bit more loose a bit more confident um and that's great that's, that's what we want to go for so hopefully uh, you know after a few of these master sketches now you're starting to feel Bit more confident with your lines. Let's put this ear in and then we'll start to render somewhat okay 
He looks a bit like Colonel Saunders, doesn't he? Right, I'm gonna, so we're still in the early stages, so I'm gonna use this as a chance to um, correct some proportions. So I'm gonna do a little bit of measuring. Um, so what I got wrong before was the, 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 you know, how far the eyes came out, you know, did they come out this far? So I'm gonna take that measurement and I'm gonna take the measurement on the drawing as well. There we go. So on the drawing, the measurement comes to about where the ear is, like the inside of the ear. So let's have a go. Okay, so there's a problem there. Perhaps the ear is too close, or this is too, too uh, expanding too far out the face. So let's do something in the middle of them too. Um, what else can we measure from? Okay, a line down from here, the gap in the beard. I think this side of the face is cropping in more. We always tend to give this far side of the face too much space uh, and it, it doesn't, more space than it deserves sort of thing. Careful of that. What about the height of the ear here? Okay, I'm getting it in, in line with this eye. So let's bring it down. just a few measurements to give me a bit of confidence going into this uh, next part. Where does the ear end? A little bit further down. Yeah, it's not, there's something not quite right there, but we'll, we'll, we'll go into the rendering now. <laughs> he has, he's got some sort of wavy look going on a bit of kms maybe okay let's go in with some strong lines now hopefully you'll be able to see this a bit more on the screen that's too much So when we, when we are rendering, we need to, we can use what the sketch underneath, but we mustn't be lazy and, and keep correcting, you know, keep correcting and analyzing what you what you put down. It's all just little chances to improve and to, to carry on, you know, another chance to, to, to get it right. So again, we've got limited time here, so don't go line for line, but go for the feeling. Go for the expression of what was being conveyed.
love the way that masters do eyebrows just these kind of lines intersecting into each other not kind of uh not overstated So look where the, the hair is kind of pinching and forming. Look for the darker lines, look for the lighter. Check your line weight constantly. look for that shadow shape inside the ear and block that in and that's normally good enough for an ear got the if you've got the contour uh, more or less right and just block in that shadow shape this 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 sort of shape you'll uh, you're off and running Really looking forward to seeing your, your sketches and your studies. Don't forget to share them. I'll give you a little bit of time at the end to, to share them so we can see them on screen. Uh, but don't be shy. Really looking forward to seeing uh, what you've put together. And let me know, you know, if you've learned something from one of these drawings or it's inspired you to go and do some more of these and remember guys this so this isn't a means to an end it's a it's a practice it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a great way to pick up some of these kind of habits and, and good good skills that they were the masters were were trained in and then go and and you know do your own portrait you like so you've drawn a portrait in the past now do some master studies and then draw one again and you'll be you'll be like oh wait a minute what would rubens have done for the hair here
this would have been some incredible flowing something you know and it wouldn't have been overstated and it would have been uh light and dark and it would have been thick and thin you know and so it's like brain juice to go at at your 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 drawings now your life drawings anything and you know what great things are possible I'm just going to see if I've got a darker pencil for a few darker accents in the last last few minutes you find yourself struggling to get the right amount of um, tone change up your uh, change up your um, your grade of pencil have a, a higher number it will help you create darker tones so what's he going for what's he accentuating the eyelids a few folds last few seconds now oh looks like a hairy line now So yeah, perhaps his ear is a bit far out. I could bring it in a bit. But more or less. Oh, I forgot this awesome pattern that's going on here. Let's just put something in for that. Can can't leave it without that, can we? Just a suggestion of something. and the occlusion shadow where it's all meeting at that point. Cool. Yeah, it's a fabulous thing there, it's awesome. So everyone, well done. Thanks so much for joining me. I think we had 20 people sketching along. It's awesome, um, really awesome. Um, so, it's funny that you can always see stuff to do to carry on, you know. But I hope these these sketches have, have helped. Um, please share your work. I'd love to see what you've been doing. Hashtag Jake's Art Club on Instagram. If you get them shared in the next, I don't know, five minutes, I'll be able to see them on on screen and we can we can have a look at them. You can always delete them afterwards. Don't worry. 
you know, if you're that that worried about it. But do share them, and we can get them up on the on the on the screen, and we can have a little look. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Yeah, thanks Rob, Robert, Hannah, Jeanette, Anne, Lucy, every one of you, uh, even even Christine. Thanks, Christine. <laughs> um and uh yeah it was good fun I, I i kind of it was interesting let's have a look at the sketches it was interesting uh so that first one i think i could have spent a bit more time you know i know i was saying you know don't worry proportions and everything we were kind of looking at the rendering, the surface rendering. But I think we could have spent a bit more time just getting uh, the eye line right, you know, just getting a few of the, the, the a bit more gesture, a bit more of that loose lines uh, and measuring. I think I was worried about the amount of time we had. And um, yeah, but, but it, it really got me on board with that kind of how contour lines can be used to show form. And even every single part of the face has its own form and shouldn't be neglected and then we moved on with Michelangelo and it, I love his kind of um to bring it a bit closer I love his kind of um directional hatching and that's something I use a lot you know just it looks great you know it looks kind of traditional and it, it, it's it's confident and just that directional hatching change angle slightly and go again with directional hatching I really I really do love that. Um, yeah, and, and remembering to save the darks, you know, really, really great to see them saving them darks. Uh, just incredible work. And it, uh, this was a good example for us to, to see that, that gesture sketch underneath. Do you remember that head was so just a loose, and it, but, but somehow it was perfectly in proportion and perfectly right, but it was just like two lines or something. So there's a lot of imagining going on up there. There's a lot of uh, a lot of that. Then uh, then the Rembrandt sketches. We did a couple. Now these were good fun. Loosening up a bit. Um, I like this. I I always love copying Rembrandt's stuff. And and I suggest you guys uh, you know Google some Rembrandt ink drawings and just have fun. You know they're they're endless fun. This one as well. Really cool, and we we picked out a few of them fundamentals, didn't we? That curve there, not overstating things, looking for the darks, really cool. And then uh, the Ruben sketch um, to finish off, and lots of great hair reference there, wasn't there? Really good rendering of the hair, not mine, Ruben's, uh, and this rough or whatever it is was just so confidently put in that it was just, you know, he's just an incredible drawer, incredible draftman. And um, we would so, I would so easily have been distracted by that and, and drawn it and make sure it was perfect. But no, just go in there, be confident. That's that's the human experience shared, you know, in, in we're not we're not taking a picture, are we? We're, we're um, sharing emotion and, and expression and rhythm. So, yeah, guys, make sure you share in your share in your work. Just again, it's a hashtag Jake's Art Club, um, and you'll be on the screen. I just want to show you my my sketchbook. Look how roughed up it is. <laughs> just the spine's completely gone. But I, for some reason, this sketchbook's my favourite. I think it's because it's not. You know, if I had like a really expensive one that was. Um, really high grade paper. I'd be afraid to draw in it, but this it's rough, it's falling apart and I can just pick it up and just go for it. So if you if you find yourself not drawing because you've got really nice expensive equipment, think about that, you know, maybe rip it up a bit. I don't know, just work out what's your block for practicing and try and try and uh, get over that art block. So um, yeah, as always, I wanna thank our Patreons um, thanks so much for supporting the channel. I want to remind you again that there's a link for the um, mailing list if you haven't signed up for that already. 
and there's a link for the Patreon down there as well. If you if you want us to carry on and and uh, want us to support support these uh, these streams and all the different videos we're doing, uh, thanks so much for supporting. Um, right before we move on to Instagram and looking at your work, I just want to share a few resources as well. So here, there's a great there's a great um, Facebook group called Old Masters Drawing. Study, copy, learn. Um, and oh, brilliant! Oh, I'm so glad you you're getting into drawing again. And uh, yeah, but this this Facebook group, it's a lot of fun. You know, it, it's it's kind of like. Um, a good inspiration for for doing their master's drawings there's you know people are sharing the, the drawings that they've picked out um uh you know you know everyone's offering tips and, and and all sorts of things and it's it's a good little community um so if you're interested in in um doing more of these uh post them post them here and people will give you some criticism if you if you ask for it and and uh, and celebrate what you're doing. Um, it's kind of like it's cool. There's a bit of a movement around it. Um, and also, I want to show you. Uh, yep. I'm always mentioning this book, drawing lessons from the great masters. Uh, always mentioning mentioning this, and it's it is fantastic. And what's great about this is, it will take. Um, it will take a master drawing and Robert Beverly Hale, fantastic uh, tutor from from the early uh, 1900s or something, I can't, can't remember, but he, he, he goes through and, uh, you know, pinpoints where to look and what to look out for. And it's, it's a really good, good resource. Um, and it, it, it kind of, it, it hits the fundamentals as well. So it goes over tone, line, and things like that so I really do recommend that and yeah if you're in a charity shop have a little look there might be you know Michelangelo sketches in a little a little book for, for 50p or, or a couple of quid and you can pick that up and it's a fantastic resource you know instead of it being online on the screen for it to be there next to your drawing is so so fun uh, and you can see it up close and, and really appreciate the, the, the lines and everything and the subtleties. So yeah, go. So Facebook, what was it? Old Master Drawings, Study, Copy, Learn. Search for that. Drawing Lessons from the Great Masters book by Robert Beverly, Beverly Hale. I'll put that in the description. I'll put it all in the description. And um, and get, get in them charity shops now that things are starting to open again. Uh, if they are opening, hopefully where you are, and have a look and, and see what see what's about. And let me know if you if you pick up any any good ones. So let's have a look at what you've been up to. Um, my favorite part. Oh, this is, oh, these look great here. Yeah. Here we are, look, look at this. Some great little sketches here. Oh, let's have a look. Ferrandi Act Atkinson, always the tricky name, always, always the tricky. Oh, I, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to look up here. <laughs> that is lovely. You've really captured her, haven't you? Really have. Um, that's spot on. So I think, yeah, you, you've, you've spent that bit extra time, you know, getting it proportionally right. And it's produced a lovely, 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 uh, drawing here i really like um this kind of paying attention to the directional hatching you know look at that around that that um what's that called um is it uh it's not jawbone it's uh cheekbone isn't it like the cheekbone here was so fantastic on her face wasn't it and and wrapping around here wrapping around that skull uh, where her face is like just slightly sinking a bit just fantastic and uh, and i like what you've done you know picked out the darks some really good drawing really good i think she'd be really happy with that oh the michelangelo awesome lovely accentuated muscles 
strong, strong straight hatching. Love it. Well, these are really good studies. Thanks for sending them in. And I hope you uh, you got something from this evening. Um, yeah, how many surnames do you want? <laughs> Anita. <laughs> That's all good. Um, what else have we got? Oh, these look great. Oh, look at this, the double, double whammy. Thomas, Thomas, always bringing out the goods, always. Thanks for joining in. This is great. Really, really cool. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Look at that. Nice. Especially like that moustache. Almost looks shiny. A little bit of a little bit of beard wax on that or something. And uh, and the, the the kind of Greek or that Roman sort of classical face is is really nicely done too. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks for sending it in. Lucy said it. Super. <laughs> really good stuff. Um, it's funny. There was so many good, so many good uh, classical artists. You know, so many masters that I wanted to share. Uh, and if you spend a little bit of time just researching and and having a little look at some of the perhaps some of the auctions that are going on and and what's what's out there, there's just so much good work. Um, here we got Pigeon Guardian. Oh, this is awesome. Really nice, really strong with the Rembrandt study. I like this a lot. You've you've kind of condensed the lines somewhat and made them even stronger than they were. I really, I can really appreciate that. This is lovely, nice little sketch. Again, beautiful side profile. Really lovely here, just showing what's essential in the hands. And you got that, that lovely sketch. Awesome. I think I'm going to have a go at it after the stream. I just, for some reason, that um, that study, that Michelangelo study is just awesome, isn't it? And I love that look. Look at that change in line weight and then thick under there and keeping that directional stroke, keeping that the kind of, you know, uh, really, what's the word? It's like, it's fresh or something, isn't it? It's, 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 it's really on point. So really good stuff. Oh, look, and then the, the Rubin study. Awesome. I think you've done really well to accentuate and, and kind of really learn. I can see that you've learned, like, not not that you didn't know anything, but what I'm saying is you've really uh, analyzed these well and kind of accentuated what was there. And, um, yeah, I think you should be really proud of these. Thanks for sending them in. And, I'm, and I hope it helped somewhat. Um, what have we got here? Is this the next one? Yep. Jeanette, lovely. Look at this. She, she you captured, captured that expression. Lovely bit of reflected light here. Lovely kind of wrinkly face, and you know, again, you know, with the with the directional hatching, just lovely. And you, it, my my one looked like a bloke. You've You've got the old lady vibe, <laughs> totally. I love it. Uh, really, really dark under under these uh, eyelids, under under the eyebrows. There, really important, and really well done. Picking out little spots of dark where necessary. It's good stuff. There's the the Michelangelo, lovely, good little, you know, exercise for us to get that hatching and and. and and everything. I'd love to see him finish the drawing, uh, you know, and see what it what it was going to turn out like. But I guess it's a, it's a study, isn't it? So he, he finished it where he needed to. It's awesome. Oh, the Rembrandt's great. Captured his lines, captured that expressiveness. Really confident. Really, really like what you've done with the face here. Kind of like simplified it even further. You know, down to its core elements, um, and you've got that wrap around there. Really important, blocked in the hand. Wonderful, really well done. The Rubens is good. Look at this little snakes. <laughs> now it's lovely. And uh, for twenty minutes, you know, what a study! Like you've you've achieved so much there, and and 
uh, you know, just awesome. So I, I hope you enjoyed it, Jeanette. Um, really nice studies. Especially like this one and the Rembrandt and the, and well, I mean, they're all good, aren't they? Little subtle lines, but love it. And thank you for sending them in. Thank you so much. Um, who have we got? We've got a few more. Brilliant ink sketch here. Nice and rough, nice and loose. Really cool. I think this is Anita again. <laughs> Love it. Look at that expression. So much can be said with just some, you know, let loose, you know, with some real ex expressive lines. Oh. Ah, love it. Really good profile. Lovely. Lovely. Love the you putting in like a little bit of um, reinforcing the shading here and there. You know, just really making sure that the viewer gets gets the point. You're getting the point across to the viewer. Really well done. Uh, what have we got here? Oh, nice. So you've gone for these confident lines around the edges and the hands. Look at that. Wow. Larissus, well done. Awesome. Awesome. Is that a cockapoo? <laughs> Is that? <laughs> Looks great. Um, uncompleted. Oh, I'd like to see you you finish this off and post it again. Yeah. But but fantastic study for the time and, and uh, really well done with the hands there. Really nice. Um, and what have we got here? Oh, that's interesting. So doing the doing the Rembrandt with the pencil and it and you've really done it nicely. You know, you've got that same kind of sketchiness, um, same kind of sketchiness as the the with the ink, um, and and almost where you've got that range of tone that you're able to do. You've you've introduced some kind of sensitivity. You know, he looks like he's got a, a red nose. He's got like he's always been drinking or something, doesn't he? And the and the woman's lovely too. Yeah, really great guys. You've captured the best of these masters i think you really have um and i hope that i hope that you you agree with me you, you know you, it's one of the best ways to practice let's give it a refresh and see if anyone else has uh, sent in nope cool well thanks everyone and uh it's uh it's been good it's been yeah what have you got? What were you guys saying? Thanks, uh, PJ. Thanks, Hannah. Anita. Robert. Thanks a lot. Jeanette. Lucy. Thanks so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good hands. Um, cool. Well, I don't know when we're going to do another stream. Probably next year. Um, yeah, probably next year, but keep your ideas coming. Okay. So if you want to, if you think of an idea, give me a message or put a comment down below uh, for a stream. If there's anything you'd like to cover specifically, we'll, uh, we'll do one. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll uh, have a go at, at practicing together. Um, yeah. It's just a nice way to, to practice together, get us all sketching. I think uh, gets me sketching and uh, yeah, thanks. Oh, Teresa, you sent yours, but it's not showing. Let's have a, give it a refresh. Um, yeah, I can't, can't see it there. Make sure you use the hashtag, okay? The, the little hash symbol and the, uh, I have got a few more on my profile. I'll show them real quick. Why, why not? So I've just found a few more on my that have been tagged to my profile. So here we've got Irene. Look at this. I look good. Glad to see you're enjoying the masterclass. Well, you've you've worked it well enough, Irene, because we we've, we've got it on stream. You know, <laughs> you've done well. But ah, oh, and uh, lovely use of shadow. 
There's lovely, lovely uh, lines here. Brilliant. Irene, thanks for sending it in. Yeah, I think what the what happened there is we need to use that hash, hash symbol. Ha hashtag Jake's Up Club, and then it will make sure it will come in with the rest of them. Um, and we've got another one here from Irene. Awesome. So you really kind of following that hairline, seeing where the hair comes to a point, you know, nice little shape for the ear. It's probably, I think that's a, that's a good proportional lineup as well. That's, that's nicely done. And, and I think you've, you've seen well, where the darks are, you know, in them, in them top eyelids and the, and the iris. So it's good. I'm, I'm really, I'm really pleased that you've, you've had a, have a, had fun and sent them in. Thanks, Irene. Um, and there was one more. This is another, another one. I'm not sure what that one is. Is that one of the ones we would sketch in? I don't know. But thanks for ta hashtag. Thanks for tagging me anyway. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, I think that's one we've seen. So guys, thanks so much. Um, people are saying they have more, more sketches, more. Ah. Oh yeah, there is more. I haven't seen Lucy's other ones. There we go. Right, Lucy, we got you. We got you. Don't worry. I'm glad we didn't miss these. This is wonderful. That rough, look at that. So much expression in there. Wonderful moustache. Strong eyes. You know, just a lovely study. And how many heads have you drawn now, Lucy? So when you drawing like a hundred heads the other day or something. And uh, day three, four, four of 366. Lucy, what are you gonna do when you reach 366? What's the celebration? Um, here we go. Here's the Michelangelo. <laughs> I love the little the smiley face. Um, ah, awesome. I think this is this is really nice and strong. This this hatching. And uh, yeah, I really suggest checking out more Michelangelo. Really, really good to copy from and and to learn from. And there's your the old lady as well some piercing eyes some lovely beautiful contour following uh lines everywhere you know everything this is really kind of spooky isn't it <laughs> she she's uh she is a spooky lady oh hannah yours weren't seen either oh i'm sorry i'll tell you what i'm i am refreshing like mad but i can't see them I think we've seen all of these right Hannah if I don't get to see them on Instagram please email them to me because uh, I'd love to see and uh, give you some feedback too but thanks for joining in and I guess we'll call it a night uh, have a great Christmas I'm coming up with some more watercolor videos and other bits and bobs and maybe an art challenge soon uh, so stay tuned and uh, I'll see you very soon thanks guys let's get max on the uh on the <laughs> on the bottles again <laughs> uh cool see you guys